Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Stewart and today we're going to be talking about neurons. These are really important cells because these are the cells that are responsible for sending um, signals in the nervous system. So a neuron comes in a couple of different shapes, but the most common shape kind of looks like this. You're going to have a cell body, which is located right here. And inside the cell body, that's where you'll have the nucleus right about there. So the cell body is kind of circular in shape. And projecting out from the cell body are going to be a series of projections. And these projections kind of look like this, where they're going to be kind of these kind of spindly looking projections, which kind of branch out. And they almost look like a dead tree or something, you know. And anyways, these projections are going to kind of extend out in a couple of different directions away from the cell body itself. I'm going to draw a couple more kind of like this. One thing that I hope you notice from this is that these little projections that extend out from the cell body, they're, they're very um, branched in a complex way. And um, what these guys do is that these guys are called dendrites. So the name of these little projections are called dendrites, D-N-D-R-I-T-E-S. And these dendrites are responsible for responsible for receiving information from other cells. So these other cells that are sending information to this neuron, I mean, it could be like a receptor, it could be another neuron, but um, this information is received by the dendrites and that information travels towards the cell body in that direction. Let me label the cell body. Cell body is right here. And then the nucleus is obviously this large black structure which is located right there okay now um you'll notice that kind of one part of the cell body it's gonna form this cone like shape it kind of forms a, almost a cone like shape or a funnel which is going to then connect to a large tube that extends far away from the cell body itself that's this thing in green that i've kind of drawn this large tube that extends away from the cell body, this is called the axon. And the funnel that separates the axon from the cell body, this is called the axon hillock. Now this is kind of what happens. You've got this neuron and it's receiving signals from all these different cells that are connected to the dendrites. These signals are coming towards the cell body. But this neuron is going to make his own decision about whether or not he's going to fire a new signal of his own. If he does decide to make a new signal, that decision takes place right here at the axon hillock. You know, he's it's like he's hearing instructions from a bunch of different people telling you what to do. Somebody's telling you to go to work, other people telling you to clean your room or clean your apartment, house, whatever it is. You make your own decision about what you're going to do that day. You might just decide to go to the beach. Well, that decision, that decision happens right here. And that new signal that the neuron is going to produce is going to fly down the axon in one direction. And that direction is away from the cell body. It travels down the axon at a high speed until eventually it's going to reach a dead end. And that is called the axon terminal. The axon terminal is right here, that's where the axon ends. And on the other side of the axon terminal is going to be another cell that's going to receive the signal that that neuron just sent. You know, that's what I've drawn in kind of yellow. That's going to be another cell, and we're going to call that the postsynaptic cell. Alright, so this postsynaptic cell is going to be right there. It's called the postsynaptic cell because this little space that separates this neuron from the cell that's receiving the information, that little space is called the synapse. Good. Now, there's a couple of things about neurons that I wanted to kind of talk about. All right? there's, they have a couple of different characteristics which are really important. The first characteristic that they have is that neurons, all right, let me label this, neurons, which is the cell I just drew, they are very long-lived. Okay, and that means that they live a long time. In fact, many of your neurons in your body are going to live as long as you do. You know, if you're 80 years old, that means that your neurons in your body that are still alive, they're all 80 years old. 
Another thing about neurons, which is really important, is these guys are amitotic. That means they don't divide, and that's a big deal. You have your set of neurons at birth. Many of these are going to die, but they can't be replaced. I mean, that's a lot different than like a skin cell. You know, if a skin cell is damaged, like a cell in your dermis or epidermis, those guys can be replaced through mitosis of neighboring cells. That's not the case with a neuron. If a neuron is, is killed or injured or damaged or, or dies for whatever reason, it cannot be replaced. And that's really why brain damage can be so crippling and such a big problem. Um, you know, a stroke, for example, is when there's a blood clot that blocks an artery in your brain, right? Well, the neurons that were receiving blood from that vessel, they no longer have access to oxygen. They die, and they can never come back. That's why, and in fact, a, a neuron can only go about seven minutes without oxygen before it dies forever. And that's exactly what happens with a stroke, because there's a blood clot that causes neurons to... to basically starve of oxygen, they die, which causes irreversible uh, brain damage because those um, neurons are gone. Okay. The last kind of characteristic of these neurons is that they are um, very expensive metabolically. So they have a high metabolic rate. Okay. And all that means is that these guys are consuming oxygen and energy at a very high rate. 60%, anywhere between 40 to 60% of your resting metabolic rate, that's just the energy that it takes to keep your body going, is devoted to keeping these guys happy even when they're not firing, even when they're not sending signals. So even when these guys are just sitting there, they're consuming about 40 to 60% of the resting metabolic rate. Um, and that is pretty... Um, Another thing I wanted to mention is, is the speed in which the signal flies down the axon. The signal that flies down the axon, axon is called the action potential. And it's a little, it's an electrical signal that I will describe in detail in another lecture. But this signal is fast, but I don't want you guys to think that it's light speed fast. The speed of an, ax, of an action potential traveling down this neuron is like 2 to uh, 40 meters per second, which is fast, but it's really not that fast. And that's because... This electrical signal that is generated um, in the axon that makes up the action potential is produced by ions kind of moving across the membrane. I'll talk about exactly how that works. So, but anyways, it's fast, but it's not super duper fast. And um, because of that, there's going to be an inherent delay in um, a signal uh, as it reaches its destination. You know, like if you tell your muscles to contract right now, the motor neurons are going to leave your brain and send an action potential down the spinal cord and out to the muscle fibers themselves. But those signals don't get there right away. There's going to be an inherent delay of a couple milliseconds before the muscles get that signal and before they can contract. Okay, so that's good. Another thing I wanted to mention is that sometimes these axons are really, really long. If we were to consider some muscle fibers in your lower leg, like in your gastrocnemius muscle, these guys are going to be innervated by motor neurons um, that look just like this. Well, the cell body for those motor neurons that are stimulating the gastrocnemius muscle, this guy is going to lie in the spinal cord. The axon is going to leave the spinal cord, go all the way down the leg, down to your calf muscle. That means that this axon could be like two to three feet long. Um, so they could be very long in length. Not all of them are that long, but many of them quite are. Many of them are. Okay, another thing that's worth mentioning with these uh, neurons is that a lot of times they're going to be surrounded by supportive cells um, that make the signals in the neuron go faster. In the peripheral nervous system, these supportive cells are called Schwann cells. And I'm going to draw these guys as like little um, collections of uh, blue cells that kind of look like this that are going to encase the neuron. Now these um, blue cells that I've drawn here, they're called Schwann cells. What they are is they're almost like these really weird pancake looking cells that are going to wrap around the axon many times, almost like a roll of tape. And what this does is this helps to insulate that electrical signal, that's the action potential, so that it travels faster down the length of the axon. That's the difference between the, the neurons that send signals at 40 meters per second versus 2 meters per second. So I'm going to draw a couple more of these little Schwann cells just to fill it in. 
Now, what's important about um, this is that um, cells of the peripheral nervous system, they have these Schwann cells, but cells of the central nervous system, they have a completely different supportive cell, and those are called oligodendrocytes. If I were to draw kind of what they look like, let's imagine that here is a neuron of the central nervous system. He's going to look very similar, you know, in his cell body and all that. He's going to kind of look like this. I'm going to draw him out with his dendrites that kind of extend out like that. He's going to have a cell body right here. He's going to have an axon that extends away from the cell body, but it's going to be surrounded by an extension of this blue cell, which is called an oligodendrocyte. This oligodendrocyte is wrapping around the axon, which allows that signal to travel faster down the length of the axon, okay? Oligodendrocytes are the ones that exist in the central nervous system. We label him. This is an oligodendrocyte, whereas these guys are called Schwann cells. And the substance that makes up both oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells is called myelin. So if you come across a neuron that's considered to be myelinated, that just means it has a bunch of different um, coverings of either oligodendrocytes or these uh, Schwann cells. Okay, so these little blue cells, those are the Schwann cells. And um, one thing that I hope you'll notice is they wrap around that axon um, several times, and that insulates the signal so that it travels faster down the action down the axon. The little gaps between the different um, Schwann cells; those are called the nodes of Ranvier. We label that. This is a node of Ranvier, and. Um, this is kind of ahead of the game here, but those are the only locations where these ions can pass into and out of the axon, and that will allow the signal or the action potential to fly down. It kind of like jumps down the axon between these nodes. One last thing I wanted to mention about these neurons is that if you're in the peripheral nervous system, so and, and if a neuron is in the peripheral nervous system and it's myelinated, so it has these Schwann cells, it has the potential to regenerate. Let's consider that neuron that sends a signal out to the muscle fibers in the lower leg. And let's imagine that this guy was cut right here, okay? So let's say that there's an injury to that um, axon right there. I'm gonna kind of redraw this axon real quick. So imagine that right here, you're gonna have this axon that's kind of extending down and there was an injury. I'm drawing the same axon right here. Let's say there's an injury right there. Everything distal to that injury where it was cut, let's say it was like a bad laceration in your upper thigh. Everything down here is gonna die. And what's gonna happen is that um, you're gonna have all this debris of dead Schwann cells and dead you know, parts of the axon. The cell body is still over here, it's still alive. So the cell body itself is still in good shape. However, this axon is obviously no longer connected to that postsynaptic cell. We'll draw that postsynaptic cell way down here. Okay, so that postsynaptic cell is like way down here. Not much yellow to that, but that's okay. There he is, he's like way down here. Okay, first thing that'll happen is that we know that neurons cannot divide, but Schwann cells can. So this Schwann cell that was positioned right here, he's still in good shape and he is going to divide and he's going to start producing new Schwann cells that are going to create a little tube or it's almost like a, a guide that is going to kind of, all these new Schwann cells are going to divide and they're going to create like a little bridge that connects the broken end of the neuron back to its destination, which is the postsynaptic cell. So he takes them all the way out here. That takes a couple of weeks for it to happen, especially, I mean, if you're talking about a, um, a an axon that's really long, like the one we talked about in our lower leg, that's two to three feet long, you're talking about weeks of cell division just for this to happen. After all of these Schwann cells kind of redivide, this is gonna provide a guide or a pathway for this axon to slowly just grow down the tube and eventually connect to that postsynaptic cell.
right, and then these um, Schwann cells are going to um, continue to divide, and they're going to kind of regenerate into Schwann cells that look like this, so that it almost looks good as new. That regeneration process can take a really long time. That axon grows at a rate of about one millimeter a day down the regeneration tube. That's why you can get a really bad injury, lose kind of sensation or even motor control of whatever that neuron was going to do. Let's say, I mean, those muscle fibers are now paralyzed in this case, but you may regain the ability to move those muscle fibers a long time after the fact because that axon can regenerate. This does not happen in the central nervous system. Oligodendrocytes do not have this ability. That's why any damage to an axon in the central nervous system is devastating. And that's about it. Next time we'll talk about what happens at the synapse. Thanks.